I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to uh, the research we're working on in Interference Pattern Structured Illumination, or IPSI. So what is IPSI? As I just said, IPSI stands for Interference Pattern Structured Illumination Imaging. And IPSI is a way to capture images which requires no imaging lens. It can create a multi-pixel image with a single pixel detector and it should be applicable to pretty much any type of wave. So right now we're doing imaging with visible light, but you could potentially apply IPSI to X-ray imaging, radar imaging, uh, imaging with acoustic waves or quantum waves, and so forth. So the goal with IPSI is to overcome some of the limits of conventional imaging. So when you image conventionally with a lens, it turns out that the resolution that you can obtain in your image, the smallest features you can see, uh, even if you have a perfect imaging system with no aberrations, it's limited by the wavelength of light and the size of your optic. So, for example, if you take a, a laser beam and focus it down with a lens, even if your lens is perfect, you won't focus to an infinitely small spot. So the red line is what you get with ray optics, which predicts an infinitely small spot. But because light is a wave, you really focus following the, these uh, blue lines right here, and you see that the, the size of the focus is not zero. And it turns out that uh, if you have ideal optics, the diffraction-limited focus depends on this angle that you focus with. So if you focus with a higher angle, you can focus to a tinier spot. Now that works in reverse as well. If you have a small lens or a lens that captures a small angle of light coming from a point, that point will be blurred out to a spot which is larger than what you would have found if you'd imaged with a lens that captured a bigger angle of light. So to do high resolution imaging, you have to capture big angles of light, which means either you need to have a very short working distance, meaning your lens is very close to the object, or you need an enormous lens so you can capture a big angle of light coming from the object. That is why microscopes tend to have lenses that are really close to the thing that they're imaging. Another problem with conventional imaging is the depth of field. The depth of field describes the range of things which are in focus. And as you can see here, for uh, a low resolution image, the range of things which are, are roughly in focus is the range over which these blue lines are, the distance between them is roughly the same. So in a low resolution image, I can have a large range of distances which are in focus. But if I do a high resolution image, if something pokes out of my image plane a little bit, it's going to be out of focus. So you're only going to be able to image things that are a very specific distance away from your lens. Also, the higher your resolution, the more aberrations you tend to get as you move off axis. So if you want to not just look at one little spot, but see a large area, but with high resolution, that is difficult to do with conventional, conventional imaging. Now, it turns out that the resolution limit is given by the, this equation known as the Abe limit, where the smallest thing you can see uh, depends on the wavelength of the light you use and the sign of the angle of light that you capture. All right, this thing right here, the index of refraction of the medium times the sign of the angle is known as the numerical aperture. So for high resolution images, you need a large numerical aperture. All right, so getting away from focusing lenses and mirrors is a big advantage of IPSI. So for example, if you want to have a high numerical aperture lens so you can see high resolution things, it's gonna cost you. So here's just an off-the-shelf microscope objective that costs three and a half thousand dollars. Here's another off-the-shelf microscope objective for higher resolution imaging. It's a thirty thousand dollar lens. All right, so because IPSI does not require us to have a high numerical aperture imaging lens, uh, we can avoid that cost. Also, we don't have to have our lenses right up next to the thing we're imaging. So you could potentially do high resolution imaging from a distance. And uh, because we don't need a, an imaging lens, uh, we could also image with things for which 
high numerical aperture lenses are really difficult to make, like imaging with x-rays or sound waves and so forth. Um, conventional imaging also requires a multiple pixel detector. Your image consists of the intensity of light on each of the little dots on your detector. But with Ipsy, we can make an image with many pixels in it, but using a detector, using just a single pixel detector. And that can be useful because uh, instead of trying to buy, you know, an imaging array, we can buy a single detector that is optimized uh, for sensitivity. Or if we wanted to image with different types of waves like x-rays or acoustic waves, um, again, we can use, we don't have to come up with an array of multi-pixel detectors. We can use just a single detector. All right, so the way Ipsy works is, well, it's a type of uh, imaging known as structured illumination imaging. So rather than imaging, making an image of your object onto a multi-pixel detector, what you do is you control the shape of the light that's illuminating the object and, and so that you can gain information uh, about the object simply by measuring how much overall light scatters from that pattern. LiDAR is an example of structured illumination. So the idea with LiDAR is I have this object that I want to image. So what I do is I shine a laser beam on it. And just by measuring with a photodiode how much light is scattered from that point, I can determine the, the color of that point. Is it a light color or a dark color? And then by scanning my laser beam and measuring how much light is detected by my detector over here for each point, I can figure out what my object looks like. I can make an image. And I don't have to use a lens to make the image, and I don't need a multi-pixel detector. I just point the laser at a point, and I measure how much light scatters back from that point, and I do that for all the, of the different points. Well, in LiDAR, we only need a single pixel detector so we get around that problem, but we don't get around the problems of having to have a high numerical aperture imaging lens. And that's because the resolution of my LiDAR image depends on the size of the laser beam. So I have to, if I want high resolution, I have to focus my laser beam down to a tiny point, which requires uh, a high numerical aperture lens to focus the laser beam. But it is an example of structured illumination. In other types of structured illumination, instead of illuminating one point at a time, you can illuminate different patterns. I'm measuring how much light comes is scattered by each different pattern, then you can calculate what the object doing the scattering must have looked like. Okay? So that's the basic idea of structured illumination. In Ipsy, we do structured illumination, but we, uh, we make the patterns we use to illuminate our object by interfering laser beams. So if I just take two laser beams and cross them, so I have a laser beam traveling this way and a laser beam traveling that way, where they cross, they will interfere with each other and form an interference pattern. It'll make a pattern of stripes. And as I change the angle of my laser beam, the spacing between the stripes changes. And if I change the orientation of my laser beams, I can make the stripes vertical or horizontal or anywhere in between. So that's the idea with Ipsy imaging, is we generate patterns by interfering laser beams such that we don't need a high numerical aperture lens to project a high resolution pattern. And then by measuring the light that is scattered or transmitted through our object for different patterns, we can figure out what the object is. Now, if you take this angle here um, of the, max, the maximum angle that we scan our laser beam to, you could call that the effective numerical aperture of our Ipsy imaging. And it turns out, for a given effective numerical aperture, we get twice the resolution of conventional imaging with the same numerical aperture. So advantages of Ipsy? We don't need a high numerical aperture lens or mirror, so that can cut cost and make it possible to do Ipsy imaging with types of waves that are difficult to do with conventional optics, like X-ray imaging or acoustical imaging, for example. There is no need for optics close to the object. We don't have to get our lens right up close to the object to capture a big angle, a big numerical aperture of light. 
The numerical aperture of our system is set by the ang maximum angle we sweep our laser beams out to, and they could be traveling from a long distance away. So you could potentially do high resolution imaging without having to get anything close to the thing you're imaging. Uh, the depth of field and field of view is improved in IPSI. Um, it turns out that the depth of field and the field of view are very simple in IPSI. Wherever the two laser beams cross and produce that interference pattern, you will get objects that are sharply resolved and in focus. All right? So whatever that volume is where the laser beams intersect, all of everything in there will be resolved. And because you don't need these special optics, it should be possible to do IPSI with different types of waves, like X-ray waves, electron uh, waves, radar, far infrared, acoustic imaging, whatever type of wave you want to use. Now, with IPSI, we can do things by, in IPSI, we, instead of measuring in the pixel-by-pixel pixel field, we're measuring with these patterns. Um, because of that, it turns out that uh, in standard IPSI imaging for, you know, an N pixel image, we have to take N measurements. But because we're measuring in a basis of our patterns, which are sine waves, uh, it turns out you don't need to measure always N pixels or N measurements to get an N pixel image because sometimes you can infer what some of your measurements would be. Um, or another way to put it is, if you measure pixel by pixel, every pixel matters in your image. But if you matter, measure pattern by pattern, it turns out sometimes some patterns aren't necessary. So you could potentially make an image with an n pixel image with fewer than n measurements. Furthermore, for a given numerical aperture, um, you get twice the resolution with IPSI that you would with conventional imaging. Also, it turns out that the imaging that we do in IPSI is very similar to the way uh, data is taken in magnetic resonance imaging. And so we've been able to apply some magnetic resonance imaging techniques. For example, this compressed sensing idea is something that is used in magnetic resonance imaging, which we've been trying to apply to IPSI as well. And developments we make in IPSI could potentially be applied to magnetic resonance imaging. So here is a layout of our basic setup we use to take an IPSI image. What we do is we take a laser beam and we split it into two pieces. And then each of those two laser beams takes a path where it bounces off of two motorized mirrors. And then the two beams are combined together on another uh, beam splitter such that we get the interference of the two laser beams on our object over here. All right? Now, because each of the laser beams pat, uh, bounces off of two motorized mirror mounts that each have two motors, we can control the angle and position of each laser beam on our object uh, independently in two dimensions. All right, and then because the phase of the, you know, the relative phase between the two laser beams determines where the dark and bright stripes are in our interference pattern, and because optical phase is very hard to control, the other output of our interferometer has a little pinhole where we measure another signal from which we can determine the phase of the interferometer. And down here are some pictures of the interference patterns we get in the object plane. Uh, and we can get patterns with different angles and different spacing by changing the angle between the two laser beams. Here's just a calculation. As we increase the angle, uh, decrease the angle between the beams, the fringes, the stripes get bigger. And as we increase, they get smaller. Again, by changing the angle between the laser beams, we can change the size of the stripes in our patterns. Here's a picture of the actual setup of one of our interferometers before we took it apart and moved it. Um, and here's just a zoom in uh, of the central part. Here's the beam splitter. Here are the four motorized mirrors. Here's the final beam splitter. Here is where our object is that we take an image of. And here is our... Um, reference sensor. All right, so here are some images that we've taken with IPSI. This is a test pattern, an Air Force Resolution test target that we used. Um, we also imaged a pattern of stripes, each of them uh, 10 microns across, spaced by 20 microns. And we've been able to uh, get 
resolutions down to just a few micrometers, a few microns. Furthermore, the resolution that we have detected is completely in line with our theory. So if we can make an interferometer that goes to wider angles, it would appear that we should be able to get still higher resolutions. Um, here's an experiment we did where we actually simultaneously imaged <coughs> with two different laser beams at two different colors, and we were able to extract the data from both laser beams independently. <laughs> so right now, well, what are we looking forward to? Well, we're pursuing or considering projects using many research methods, including experimental laser optics, mechanical design and testing, data processing methods, imaging processing, MRI parallel imaging techniques, computer motion control. So if any of these types of technologies are interesting to you, there's probably a project you could work on that uses uh, these technologies. Some of the specific scientific goals we're working on are applying MRI parallel imaging techniques to IPSI, uh, digital holography, uh, doing imaging with sound waves, ultrasonic sound waves, doing high resolution long working distance microscopy, so basically microscopy but without any optics close to the object. We're also working on understanding and correcting different distortions and errors you can get in IPSI imaging and boosting the speed at which we take images.